I can't believe it. I am number one in the world. Hey guys, Hook to Clash here, and I can't quite believe I'm making this video. I didn't ever think I would be making this video. Now, we didn't reset number one in the world, obviously, you, uh, you saw that from the little part there, but we reset top 50, and I kind of accidentally got number one in the world. I wasn't rushing my hits at the start of the day to get number one. It just kind of happened, and uh, the way that we did it was pretty insane. Now, from this first attack, you're not going to quite believe that uh, I got a perfect day, because this was a pretty bad attack. I just completely forgot there was a sweeper there. Um, coming in up against Rocky here, who actually won the Legend League pushing competition in my server last month, so GG's to him. I'm sorry that my way of congratulating you ended up being taking 40 cups off you, but... Uh, uh, GG's to you, man, and uh, unfortunate here. Then running onto me, running uh, into me attacking you on a day where I simply put just couldn't fail. Now I was trying to land the Blizz here. In the past, I've landed the Blizz in this compartment, but there's giant bombs and Nados in here, so I wanted to land it uh, right in this compartment, but I just completely forgot that there was a sweeper there. So nice one there to hooked. But we still get solid value, and we go into this Sui that I really haven't seen any other Blizz Lilo players doing, but I really like this Sui. It is a bit risky, but uh, if you if you execute execute it correctly, you will get the rewards. Um, so what I do is I run the King and Queen around, and their job's to actually get the Town Hall. They only get the stuff on the outside of the base, and then the RC sneaks in and takes out the core of the base. Works out really nicely. The first wall break, as you can tell, I deliberately go for the junction here. And the reason I'm going for that is I'm trying to open as many compartments as possible so that the second wall break doesn't go for the other compartment there. It goes towards the town hall. Look at the RC in the core of the base. We use our last invis for her. She got a sweeper. She had, Yeah, she got one sweeper and a multi and the cannon down. Really nice there, but we've got to start the Lalo. There's no time to rest. I'm pretty short on time at this stage. We got three Hounds for the Lola, which is nice. We get all our Headhunters and Hounds in the Warden ability. But I do recognize absolutely immediately here that my Loons are not pathing to the core. So as you can tell, I send in a few Loons behind. And their job is just to get that core multi. I freeze for them because those Loons don't have the benefit of the Warden ability. So uh, if they take lose a lot of health quickly, we are not getting the multi down. The Queen has somehow lived. Uh, this base actually has really good springs against headhunters, so you need to be careful of that. But thankfully, because it was a double ice golem CC, didn't have to use the poison, and the poison comes in handy on the queen. I don't know how she didn't kill the warden, though. Uh, that is incredibly lucky that my warden's still alive. But to be fair, pretty sure we had the triple anyway. Um, the poison with the minions was always going to take out the queen. And we have plenty of loons up. And look, after a pretty shaky start, trust me, I was a little uh, tired when we started the Legends hits today. After a pretty shaky start, I am going to start to gear up as we go through the day. You're going to see me take down so many different styles of base today with the Blizzard Lalo. Another well-known name here. We've had Smith on the channel before, and he's running this teaser base. You're actually going to see me hit a few teaser bases today. They're quite common in High Legends, and I assume it's because they're doing really well at stopping the air spam. Now, this uh, this particular teaser is really common. In fact, a few months ago in Legends League, this teaser made me not want to do Blizz Lalo anymore. It's really bad for Blizzard Lalo. But this crack, I'm pretty happy with at this point. So you're going to see me do it here. We pull the CC. It's not actually an easy CC to pull. Um, so this is why I'm kind of happy I bring gobs in my Blizzard CC instead of archers. Because the gobs run off ahead and they pull the CC. You can see the CC range there. My gobs actually took down the town hall as well, by the way. Go back and have a look at it. The Raged Invis uh, 5 gobs do a great job there. Now, yes, we don't get the chain damage off the town hall, which is unfortunate. But it guarantees the town will go in down, and I'm okay with that. Anyways, as we come in here, um, so we, we blizz one side. Um, and the reason I come in on a side is just you're more likely to pull the CC. If I land the blizz at the bottom, you're not as likely. Also, you're more likely to pull two giant bombs simultaneously. Whereas from a, a side, you're only going to pull one at a time. So king and queen go into the scatter. Then the RC's job is to actually get the other scatter shot. King does a good job. Now, the only downside of this is ground skellies hold the RC up tremendously, which is unfortunate. But still, I've got another invis for her, and that's going to work perfectly. 
There goes the Invis. She's going to take down the Scatter. And the Queen, look at this. She can reach both Maltese and the enemy Queen here. Is she going to get all of that? Absolutely not. She's actually going to kind of troll me here. And I go really heavy on the Lalo for this one. Because there's no need to use uh, flanking balloons at the top of the screen here. There's just no need. Look at this, by the way. My enemy, my queen gets the multi down to one health and then gets distracted by the queen. Rather than getting one or the other, she gets neither. Nice. Now, unfortunately, I actually put my ward in a second late here, which means that uh, the, my headhunters die uh, beforehand. So that was pretty poor. And that's honestly going to be probably the last mistake you're going to see me make today because um, we just get absolutely hot. Unfortunately, this queen... Is a bit of a pain here, but she does go down. Owl and minions insane. And we don't have too many loons up. My, the defensive queen took out my warden. But we do have just enough. And I mean, we actually have plenty of cleanup as well. So I wasn't too worried at this stage. Loons get the arch tower down. And a wizard tower is not going to take down three balloons just by itself. It tries its absolute best. But yeah, this was a GG's. And if, if we got the head hunters in the warden ability... This would have been absolutely cracked, so don't worry. This way to take down this base is rock solid. Here is another recognizable name for you guys, Tuantran. One of the best pushes we have in the game, honestly. He's always up there at the top of the leaderboard. I think he finished number 7 last season. Um, so yeah, I ran into some really big name players early in the day today, and uh, we were clapping them. And this, this attack is uh, when we really start to get it going. So this this box base is probably the easiest base for Blizz Lalo. It does look pretty toxic for air spam though. So if you're worried about that, this base is not a bad idea. But in terms of Blizz Lalo, this base is a dream. I love running into this base. I've crushed it every single time. And this is how I do it. Now, we actually have had Eltano on the channel before. Who landed his Blizz here. And that's a really good Blizz location as well. But I prefer this Blizz. Um... And you'll see why in a second. It's less so about the blizzard value. In saying that, look at that blizzard value. Getting that air bow down here is... You don't always get it down, but I tell you what. When you do, the base is pretty wrecked. Um, this, uh, this Sui is insane. This Sui is insane. I think you can already see what we're going for. Gonna do the exact same style Sui as you saw me do in the first attack here. Like I said, not a lot of Blizz Lalo players running this uh, Sui. Um, but maybe they should be. Like I said, it is risky... Uh, you're less likely to get the Town Hall, but you're more likely to get enough Blizzard, uh, enough Sui value such that the Lalo is unfailable, and that's what happens here. So yet again, I will break the Junction so that, you know, we can save our second Wall Breaker, because otherwise, I'll just pause it quickly, because I don't think I explained it well before. If I Wall Break here, then I also have to Wall Break again there, so that the Queen can go into this compartment, and then I don't have any wall breaks to get to the Town Hall. So what you gotta do, wall break the junction so you open both of them, and this space actually has a pretty glaring weakness, in the sense that you can, uh, wall all I have to do is wall break this scatter shot, and my Queen can reach the Town Hall from there, which is super nice. Fortunately, my King kind of betrayed me, it would have been nice to have his tanking in the core, but all I had to do is freeze the scatter shot once, so that's fine. RC's in the middle of the base, her abilities pop, but yeah, She's done absolutely amazing work. We pop the Queen ability here, and the Lolo's coming from the bottom. Now, this was a pretty bad deployment. I have way too many loons on the same tile here, and not enough go to the Archer Tower. So it was pretty bad deployment, but uh, look. Look what's left of the base. There's really nothing. There's a few important defenses here, but look at them. I can freeze all of them. There goes freeze number one. Super nice. These loons will path to the core multi and freeze number two, and the loons all gather on top, and as you can tell, there are 65 red bombs there, taking out all my balloons, but I had so many balloons left, that ultimately it do did not matter, we had plenty of time left with this one, look at that as well, two swag spells, but I'm going to teach you all a very important lesson about swag spells here, if you swag spells, make sure you use them, don't keep them in your army comp, because you're going to see in the next attack, something is slightly awry. Let me know if you can see what is slightly awry in our army comp here. Shouldn't take you too long. Pretty obvious there. We've got six invis spells. Now, thankfully, I actually noticed this immediately. These are... Uh, these spell... Uh, well, when you just have the wrong spell composition, it gets pretty dangerous when you don't know you've got the wrong spell composition. I don't know, like what happens in the very next attack. But we'll get to that in a second. But... Because I was aware of it here, we can we made it work, and I actually deliberately used five invis on this blizzard. Normally, it's not what I want to do, but hey, 
when the game forces you to do that, why not? Now, we don't actually pull out the whole CC here. Um, as you can tell, a bunch of archers and one headhunter. And I'm pretty sure there is a hound left in this CC. Because my hound would have pulled it if it was super minions. So, watch what I do differently with this uh, suey. By the way, look at this. We got the four super wizards were still alive and decided to tag along. I found this quite funny, to be honest. I couldn't quite believe it. I've never had this happen before. I did a super wizard hero kill squad. It's the new thing to break Clash of Clans. I actually thought it'd be really handy because they'd help kill these uh, skeleton spells. They didn't. They didn't even shoot, which was unfortunate. Um, and they all died to the town hall there. But still, they did their work. They actually just helped speed up this Sui. Now, normally on this base, I save my Royal Champion for the Lalo. Because there's just no point sending your Royal Champion into this much damage. But the reason I use her here this time is because I know there's a Helm left in that CC. There's no point Laloing with my Royal Champion if she's just going to pull the Hound. She'll just spend the entire time fighting a, a uh, Lava Hound and doing nothing. Providing no actual value. Whereas if I use her from here, as you can tell... I use it for me. I mean, I'm starting the Lalu, but look at her. She gets the Scattershot and the Multi and the Sweeper that my Queen wouldn't have gotten. I consider that pretty good value. What if she got more value with the Lalu if there was no defensive CC? I think so, because uh, she's just so strong with the Lalu. But because of that Hound defensive CC, because as you can tell, it still hasn't pulled. Um, with that Hound defensive CC, it absolutely made sense. And uh, I mean, look at it. I didn't need that Warden ability, guys. I, I could have just used the freeze here. I could have swagged the Warden ability. This was so unbelievably clapped. I was pretty happy with this attack. But this base is really easy. Land the Blizzard in that comp. And as long as you can sui the Town Hall, it's almost impossible to fail it. So I'm liking the number of teasers we're seeing in Legends League at the moment. Here is the issue with messing up once with your spell composition. Last attack, we had one extra Invis and one less Haste. Guess what happened this attack? Do you see anything wrong with our spell composition? Now, in the last attack, it didn't really matter. Trust me, in this attack, it does matter. But we'll get more to that later on. In terms of this, I have struggled with ring bases a lot in the last couple of weeks. Because ring bases now are set up to be really anti-Blizzard. And also, I just don't have a lot of practice hitting them. But this attack was really, really sound. I was pretty happy with it, honestly. It took me a while to figure out where to Blizzard on this base. Um... Because it's kind of not an easy base to decide that. I had a lot of different ideas. But blizzing down uh, where I blizzed made a lot of sense. We got a CC pull. I killed the eagle. I killed the queen. It was pretty safe to get in. There was no Sams. And uh, yes, there could be room for giant bombs in this area here. That is the worst shape you'll ever see in your life. But there was room for giant bombs here. But as you can tell, I landed on where most of them would be. So if there was giant bombs here, I wasn't going to pull it. But my Super Wizards didn't really travel there anyway. As you can tell, we set the funnel on the top side with the Baby Drake and a Sneaky Gob. The King beats the first wall. And as soon as the King's beating the wall, I've got my Wizard and the RC on the top side. Because we're trying to set a funnel so that the King will go into the second layer. Look at the timing on that. That was perfect. The Wall Breaker opened the wall as soon as the King took out the last building. And it happens again here. I'm just having one of those days. Now, I use a freeze for my champion here because I want her to set a, as good a funnel as possible. And I bring in the headhunters because I've already killed the defensive queen. If I kill the RC as well, there's no real point for headhunters. Now, this is where it gets problematic. If I had my fifth invis, I just invis that defensive king there and go for the town hall um, with the queen ability. But it did get a little dicey there. And time is... Slightly low, but Lalo's on rings are quick. But have a look at my queen here. She's on the edge of life. There's no way she isn't dead. She gets the multi down with her last shot. That was so clutch. I was kind of impressed with what she did. Now, did it matter in the end? No. No, it didn't. We clap this base. We absolutely clap it. But, but, I uh, am I going to complain about it? Absolutely not. Nice warden ability there. We didn't get all of our balloons in it. But we got the balloons that were taking damage, and we got a Lava Hound in it. And I don't know if you saw, that Lava Hound went across in the Warden ability and took two Sams, and I think two Red Bombs as well. So, can't really ask for more value than that. And this is the third attack in a row where I'm swagging spells. So, I've swagged five spells in the last three attacks, and that's kind of... This is kind of when I knew I was having a great day. This is when I knew we definitely had a chance to put up a perfect... Obviously, you never want to think about it in your mind... 
Yes, that swag that spell was swagged. I did I had plenty of time left here. But this is when I knew I was having an insane day, and you'll see that shown in the next two attacks. Back to box bases. Now, this box base, often normally I'm blizzing this air defense comp or the scatter comp. But I didn't really want to blizz the scatter comp on this. Um, I just didn't feel like it. So why not go with the slizzard? We come in, so I sent that Coco Loon. If a Tesla popped, then I wouldn't have done the slizzard. Because then it's just simply too, simply put too risky. But with no Teslas popping, that is very safe. And look at this. We get the CC pull as well. You'll see it in a second. Because we haven't got the full CC pull yet. But yep, we just let our Super Wizards be vulnerable for a second. I mean, they took down the airbow as well. Was I meaning for them to take down the airbow? Absolutely not. Am I complaining? No. Now, whilst we deal with this CC... You will notice that I deliberately popped the Slammer before it took down this Builder Hut. The reason I did that is because if it does that, it opens up all of these walls. Which does mean we can take this air bow down, which is nice. But it also means that my Super Wizards could have just run out of the base. If they wanted if they wanted to target this, they could have run outside of the base. Um, which would be bad. The only way I can guarantee the tunnel goes down is if I don't open that wall. So it was just a... Uh, safety sort of thing. I'm sure if I popped it, it would have worked anyway, but up to you guys whether you want to take the risk or not, and I wasn't really feeling like it. Now, I don't often do this Sui, because I often don't blizz the town on box bases, so I was a little curious to see how this Sui would go. I was, look, I was confident we were having a great day, but I just wanted to see what would happen here. Um, so you do the king and queen like that, and then the RC's jobs to get the core of the base, because I don't really want to Lalo with the core of the base up. It just Leaves too many possibilities for trouble. Look at this, by the way. The king takes out the enemy queen. What an amazing... What an amazing dude. Then look at this invis. That was such a good invis. Whilst my king's going and I'm deploying the Lalo, I invis to get my champion queen and the super wall break in the invis. And look at that. We've opened up the core of the base. Fortunately, the RC dies. Um, there's just no point using a freeze on her, though. Her value was pretty done at this point. Lalo's coming across... And, uh, yeah, this is looking really good. Now, that sweeper was being a bit of a pain, but we just, uh, we're not really worried about that. We just haste over the scatter shop, freeze the scatter and wizard tower, and how is my warden over there? If anyone can explain why my warden isn't following the 26 loons at the top and is instead following one queen, I'm all ears. I couldn't quite believe that, sh that the warden did this, and it actually ends up getting kind of close because these loons don't have as much health, and look at those red bombs. If my Warden was with the Loons, the Red Bombs don't take out the Balloons there. Look at him. He leaves her again. This time I understand, though, because, you know, he let all the Loons die. He wouldn't go back anyway. But, yeah, this was a... Look, it was a pretty clean attack. The Warden made it closer than it really should be, but I'm pretty happy with that 40 Cups. Remember how I told you all I was feeling it today? Yeah, apparently one Slizzard isn't enough. You're going to see me do it again here. And the simple reason is... I couldn't see any blizz value on the back end of the base, and if I wanted to blizz the town hall with a blimp here, I'd have to send the blimp kind of like this. And that just involves using a Lava Hound and a few other loons and potentially running into a bait. Whereas with this, pretty safe. As long as you send that Coco Balloon and don't pull out any Teslas, why not? I mean, look at the value we get here. Now, you will notice this time I let the blimp open. Uh, I let the slammer drop. And that was just on the off chance that my super wizards wanted, wanted to go inside this compartment and get those expos. I didn't think they would. But I was like, why not? Because I was always going to get the town hall. Look at how close I'm landing that blizz to the town hall, right? There was no... Or the sliz, sorry. There was no way we're missing the town hall. So why not try and uh, see what else you can get? Anyways... This Sui was one of the smarter ones I actually do. So initially, because the plan you I generally do on this, as you saw in the last stack, King Queen to go get the core, RC to come in behind and get this. But Royal Champions kind of struggle against uh, Expos. They've got so much health and they do a lot of damage to her. So I was like, you know what? Let's let the King do it. So as you can tell, I deliberately don't hit the junction over here. And the King's forced to go to these airbows. Now, it means I don't have a tank. For my queen and RC, so I've kind of, I've got to kind of just use them in conjunction here. Uh, we freeze that scatter shot before my queen has to pop her ability. The king doesn't get all the expos, but he got three of them. I'm pretty happy with that effort. My royal champion probably, probably would have got similar value, but the royal champion uh, with this Sui over here means that she's going to get the eagle. Look at that, her ability goes up there. The queen reroutes as well. 
We've got an invis. Uh, and I've still got another invis, by the way. But we've got to start our Lalo. I am a little short on time at this point. Queen's doing nice things over there. I pop her ability manually and then realize I need to put the invis down for the RC. Look at this. She gets the eagle and the sweeper. Now, in terms of why I Lalo'd from the right-hand side this time instead of the other way, because we normally... Um, we do normally Lalo the other way. It was just... Killing the Royal Champion was always going to be an issue. And the reason I often come from the other way is to get to the Eagle ASAP. But the Eagle's down. The Eagle was down, so there was no need to. And it just the Lalo pathing was so nice. My loons are quite low. That defensive Royal Champion didn't die to my headhunters. I don't know how she managed that. But uh, it doesn't matter. Because, yet again, when you can bring three hounds with your Lalo... I have so many Lava Pups going around, and they kill the Royal Champion. And, uh, yeah... This haste, I don't know if it was needed or not. I don't think it was. We, we're not going to count it as swag, though, just to be fair. But the haste spell, to make sure that the best air defense in the game goes down as quickly as possible to our balloons. And this, that was just a pretty clean attack. I'm pretty happy with the AR decision making there. It has been a long time since I was this nervous for an attack. Not only am I going for the perfect day, but someone in my Discord server decided to tell me that, Hooked, if you triple this... You are number two in the world. I hadn't even been looking at my rank the entire day. I didn't know that I was inside the top 10. And I didn't know if I tripled this, I'd be number two in the world. I wish they hadn't told... I wish I hadn't read it. Because it just added so much unnecessary pressure. Also, it doesn't help that I'm attacking one of the most famous Legends League pushes that there is. Coming up against Black Zero here. Um, I still haven't failed in, against Zero. Um, pretty happy with that. But, yeah, this was pretty nerve-wracking. Little did I know on top of that, not only would we be number two in the world that I, if I tripled this, but the number one player in the world currently is taking a defense as I'm attacking. I wonder if it was Black Zero. It probably wasn't. Uh, I didn't have a look and go see afterwards who had dropped off number one because I didn't know who was number one. Um, that would have been really cool though if Black Zero was number one and I tripled him to be uh, number one myself. But alas, I was pretty nervous. I could literally hear my heart beating. I've done attacks in World Championship qualifiers to qualify uh, for one, one of the monthly qualifiers. I said qualify way too many times in a sentence there. But I've done attacks like that before, and I still wasn't this nervous. I couldn't quite believe what was at stake here. But I was super confident. We've already tripled a very similar base to this today. This is just a slightly tweaked version. And on top of that, everything has gone right, and I mean, this Lalo is pretty simple. And, look, and uh, it says only one minute left here. I started my Lalo with a minute 40 left, though. There was no risks being taken here. I was not waiting around to make sure my queen got the town hall. I did try and freeze the champion and the eagle. And then the champion just buzzed off. I got my RC with the Lalo this time because there's, we've lured the entire CC. So I'm deciding to bring her with the Lalo. It's obviously the right move. Headhunters to deal with the king. And then they go and deal with this defensive RC as well. And I mean, this is pretty crushed. Yeah, I've only got one freeze left, so it's actually going to get slightly closer than maybe it should be. But I've got so many balloons. And I've got a champ. And I've got an invis for the champ if I need it. But I won't be needing it. I've got two loons left, which just happened to be perfect for the troll Tesla. But that wouldn't have mattered. I've tripled this with 40 seconds to go. And I couldn't believe it. I was so psyched at this point. I was a little disappointed I didn't live record it yet again. Sorry about that to you guys. I just didn't plan on getting a perfect day today. Um, but enough of my reaction now a day later. Why don't you guys go and have a look at my live reaction right now. I am number one in the world. This is live straight after the eight attacks. I'm sorry I couldn't catch them live. I simply put didn't record it because I didn't think I would be number one in the world. Now... It is like four hours into the day, and I have done all eight attacks, so I won't reset number one, but still, we reset top 50 in the world, so it's pretty legit if you ask me. I really hope you guys enjoyed the attacks and the analysis of all of them. I still- I can't believe it. I am number one in the world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, if you did enjoy the content, please like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate all the love from you guys. And let me know what other armies you'd like to see in the comments down below. But that's it from me. Have a nice day. Have a nice new year. And maybe I'll see you soon.